We've got ESPN. You see this. They have released their WNBA rookie rankings. And Angel Reese has overtaken Caitlin Clark as the top WNBA rookie based on advanced metrics? Is this a joke? You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no-holds-barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, I've been banging the drum about this for over 10 days now, maybe two weeks, that you would see a clear shift in the woke media, the DEI-led media, to elevate Angel Reese somehow, some way, through uh, mental and, I guess, statistical gymnastics. I don't, I don't know what gymnastics they could be using or what statistics they could be using, but to try to elevate Angel Reese up into the Rookie of the Year conversation. Now, Vegas is not dumb. Vegas knows this is fool's gold, and Caitlin Clark is way out ahead in Vegas in the betting lines for Rookie of the Year. I, I believe there's one uh, one outfit in Vegas that's got Caitlin Clark a minus 800 at this point. Way, way out in front. And we came out of the triple-double win of Caitlin Clark against the Liberty going, okay, well, surely this is going, going to start quite quietening some of those calls. It didn't. It didn't. Now, they have uh, artificially elevated this double-double streak that Angel Reese has got. And we did a deep dive in a video day before yesterday showing exactly how bad Angel Reese's statistics were and why all of those rebounds are really fool's gold. And then yesterday you had the one of the most despicable actions we have seen in a sporting event where it was clear that other WNBA players are now plotting against Caitlin Clark to elevate Angel Reese. And I'm talking about the Atlanta Dream. As, as you could tell, they all conspired to make sure that Angel Reese got the ball again at the end of the game so she could reach 10 points and extend the streak. She only had nine points. But they fouled her with seven seconds left, made no sense, was nonsensical, and the streak continued. The streak is now a lie. All right? The streak is not a lie, uh, now a lie, and I did a video on that earlier. Uh, so, far as the woke media goes... Uh, here we go. Let me switch over here. This is, of course, wins and losses. Uh, Chicago has got a better win percentage at a point four twenty nine. Indiana's got a, a point three nine one. They both got nine wins on this season. Uh, the Indiana Fever are actually six and four in their last ten. The Chicago Sky is five and five. But keep in mind, the Chicago Sky was a better team before this season started than the Indiana Fever were, all right? And Indiana is right there in the playoff conversation. Well, I thought a lot of that noise would stop. You got the first WNBA rookie ever to have a triple-double. It had never it never happened before until Caitlin Clark did it in a win over the best team in the league, the New York Liberty. Then you had yesterday, which was a Christy Sides disaster special, but Kaitlyn Clark took that game over and was the first WNBA player in the history of the league with 25-plus points, 10-plus assists, 5-plus rebounds, 5-plus steals, and 5-plus three-pointers in a game. And by the way, that was also an NBA stat. It hadn't happened even in the NBA since 73 and 74. And it's clear Kaitlyn Clark should be the runaway Rookie of the Year winner. It shouldn't be close. 16.75.9. Five. She's averaging almost six rebounds a game. At six foot tall. Angel Reese is six four. And she is closing in on averaging eight assists a game. By the way, you want to talk double doubles? I mean, seriously? You want to talk double doubles? She's got four straight games with at least 10 assists. With 19 points and 29 points thrown in there. But here we are. As we stand here today, we've got ESPN, you see this, they have released their WNBA rookie rankings, 
and Angel Reese has overtaken Caitlin Clark as the top WNBA rookie based on advanced metrics? Is this a joke? I mean, seriously, after the week that we just witnessed from Caitlin Clark, this is what ESPN releases. And as you can imagine, they got destroyed, and they are getting destroyed. Some are probably just calling this clickbait. Uh, this is an intention getter right here. Uh, they achieved that. Angel Reese is a missed layup merchant. And there is proof of that. I mean, seriously. Miss a layup, grab my own rebound. Miss a layup, grab my own rebound. Make shot. Over. Rinse. Repeat. Angel Reese is a stat patter. The whole world saw it the last game. I mean, serious. No, re no real reason for this other than clicks, quite honestly. Good job, though. I, I mean, seriously, ESPN just wants clicks. Come on, now. Don't waste your time. Caitlin Clark is a minus 800 to win the Rookie of the Year. The race isn't close, as it shouldn't be. She does so many things well for her team, which is why she's accounting for more than 40% of their scoring. She is either involved by way of assist or scoring the actual buckets herself to a clip of 40%. Advanced metrics for rookie of the year. Laughing my ass off. Seriously. She throws the ball off the backboard to herself. Talking about Angel Reese. Uh, fake news. Seriously. This is cap and we know it. Yeah, whatever. I mean, wow. Stat padding to get 10 points is wild. This is the video I did earlier today. Folks, this is at the end of the game with 10 seconds left. They threw the ball into her and they fouled her so she could get her points and keep her double-double streak alive. Uh, seriously, quote, advanced metrics, a.k.a. DEI, can't give the privileged white girl the award she deserves. America is rigged. I mean, God, come on. Angel Reese is literally stat padding every single game just so she can get a double-double. Do those account, and talking about advanced metrics, do those account for players on the opposite team fouling Reese with under a minute left solely to send her to the line and pad her stats? Black WNBA players putting their hatred of white players ahead of their own team's success. I mean, we're in a full, we're in full own conspiracy mode here, folks. I mean, wow. Going to be a close race. CC should take it, though. We all know Clark is the real rookie of the year. Y'all going to be real mad. Yeah, this is nuts. When you have to push a fake argument and make up new stats, basically. Uh, hey, Elvis Jr., yeah, right. ESPN with the agenda against CC, I see, quote, advanced metrics. Clowns. Uh, this is wild. I mean, wild. Y'all clickbaiting now. Y'all down this bad? <laughs> uh, I mean, God. Oh, it's ESPN Bet. ESPN Bet's got her at, at minus 800. Angel's way up at a plus 450. I mean, that's, that's insane. This one's at minus 850. Clickbait. God. Look at the stats. CC's better. Yeah. No shit. It's wild. It is wild. Yeah. Mr. Rogers, put your clown mask on. I, I told you, folks. I told you this is going to be a continuous occurrence. Let me just click that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see, 100, uh, 366 votes, 
<laughs> I mean, seriously. That's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, God. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I can't even believe it. Uh, I mean, I can. I can. What am I talking about? Yes, I can believe what ESPN is doing. I called that this would start happening. You're seeing it from CBS Sports, too, by the way. They're going to try their best here, folks. I mean, if CC doesn't win the award clearly, and look, we're going we're gonna to pay close attention. The AP yesterday released their midseason ranks of the actual votes. And yeah, Caitlin Clark is winning. It's way too close. It's like nine votes for Caitlin Clark, five votes for Angel Re I mean, what planet are you people on? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It really is. Wow. Wow. I mean, a fake Rookie of the Year race. That's what's happening right now. Hmm, we'll have to see. That's uh, that's like the year that uh, Cam Newton, this is what we're looking at. The year that Cam Newton won the MVP award, Tom Brady should have rolled with the MVP. I mean, obliterated it, took it, and, and walked off in the, the sunset. But the media uh, flooded the narrative so deep that, that Cam, I think he had a 58% completion percentage. Cam won the award, even though Tom Brady put up some ridiculous numbers. But because Tom had already won it a couple of times, blah, 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 the media didn't want to give it to him. We're looking at that all over again. Cam versus Tom Brady, the MVP year. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.